It's a twister! It's a twister! <laughs> Storm's getting me pumped up, man. I'm telling you what, man. I've seen some storms in my day, but this one right here, I sense it, man. I just got that. See, I broke my foot a long time ago on a dirt bike. Every time it storms and it's getting pressured up, I can feel it. In, I can feel it in my foot, that left foot right there. Oh, yeah? You don't believe me? You don't believe me, do you? I don't here, believe it. I'm going to show you right now. That's all right. You I'm don't have show to. You right it's now. okay. It's all right. I want you looking here. I believe you. I want you to look right here. Look. You see that scar? Yeah. Your feet stink. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. 11 years ago today, my original severe earthquake warning for California in September 2010 on my old YouTube channel, Flank99, went viral and got so many views in the videos. Today, 11 years ago, I'm Frank down. <laughs> Whether or not. There it is. And it's episode 21 of the Comedian Report. Yes, we've 21 weeks in. And I am your host, Joey Only. And uh, I think we're nine weeks in on the air in uh, Prince George, Vancouver, and Winnipeg as well. So you can hear us on Seaford. 88.7 FM in Prince George on uh, 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday mornings. On uh, Monday, which was a special day for Frankie, because it's going to be his 10th anniversary of his YouTube channel. Uh, that's at uh, 10 uh, noon in Winnipeg on CKUW 95.9 FM. And then noon again local time in Vancouver at CFRO 100.5 FM. This is the Comedirological Report. Uh, com Comedirology is the study of comedy and meteorology mixed together. And I have my panel of comedirologists with me, plus my other host, Frankie McDonald, who's having a special week. And before I even begin, I just got to tell you all what a crazy week it's been. I mean, I've been... Uh, logging and uh, doing small scale logging here in bc you can find all that as well as uh, this show on my caribou dude joey only the caribou dude channel on uh youtube uh so we've been doing small scale logging i've climbed a mountain this week uh had just a great old time meanwhile uh we've had thunderstorms on repeat in british columbia especially in the caribou where there's been some strong storms uh ken schwartz even photographed one of prince george that looked quite tornadic uh there was uh yesterday um, out on the coast, of course, uh, a big water spout uh, photograph. So uh, oh, wow. this has been uh, BC, we call it January here. The Caribou, especially Prince George, uh, Qu uh, Quinnell and Williams Lake have been seeing repeat thunderstorms as a daily event in the Chilcotin and Caribou plateaus. So that's been BC. Meanwhile, over in Alberta, Brandon houk has been seeing, you know, tornadic weather and he's here with us tonight. Frankie McDonald, it's his 10th anniversary of his YouTube channel. He's here. Well, look, and Joe Stover, he was up in, uh, he's in Churchill, Manitoba, where he saw the eclipse this morning. Uh, so we're film we're recording this show on Thursdays, and you can find it on my YouTube channel on Fridays. Uh, and uh, then it airs on the radio Saturday and Monday and then again on Tuesday in Prince George. Uh, so that's crazy. Monica Beaulieu, she's uh, in Bonaventure, Quebec, and she had uh, a bunch of uh, wind damage and things happen at her house this morning, and it's been hot on the East Coast. Frankie McDonald, tell us about the weather in the East Coast. Right now, this Tuesday past, it was hot in Hilton, Sydney, Nova Scotia. Wednesday, it cooled off. Now it's really, really cold today. It's been reports of snowstorm in St. John's, Newfoundland, and Avalon Provincia. It was snow. No, it was still snowing in St. John's, Newfoundland, Ground is white there. High roads are bad in Newfoundland because of lots of snow. Since people got summer tires on, roads are dangerous because the roads are really slippery in St. John's, Newfoundland. It's been reports of snow in St. John's, Newfoundland, Avalon Peninsula. It's been lots of snow there right now. And winds are blowing, causing how because storm is intensifying off the coast of Newfoundland. It's going to get stronger because of cold air. So meanwhile, you had record-breaking temperatures, though, this week, did you not? Record-breaking temperatures on Tuesday snowstorm in St. John's Newfoundland later on the Tuesday, Thursday. That's just uh, wild. What do you think is the story behind all that? That could cause really slippery driving conditions in St. John's Newfoundland. Dangerous driving conditions like... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> looking into uh, next week, Frankie, what do you think is going to happen for the East Coast uh, come next week, uh, Monday, Tuesday? 
then it could be warm air, cold air fighting each other in places like in New Market, probably get cooler than average temperatures too. All right. Well, we're on the East Coast. You might as well talk to Monica because I know she's about ready to go to bed for work and it's uh, late on your time, Monica. So you had some uh, wind damage this morning. It's not so much wind damage. It was wind activity. First of all, it was like heat wave galore for the longest time. I even have a suntan. But then this morning it was just not just windy, but freaking cold. It was it was oh, wow. uh, like it was like fall all over again. And I'm in love with fall, but yeah. And then before work, I had to run around and put stuff back and that flew away. Like one of these, I didn't bother putting back outside. And, and so now it's cold. So here I had two buckets of water in my air conditioning in my room slash office. And then it went from that to, oh shoot, now I got to untape everything because it's too cold in here. <laughs> now I got the heaters on. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been interesting. But I'm oh, wow. watching tornadoes happening live on on social media, and it's exciting. And now I'm here with you guys. It's so cool. So, like, I had the opposite <laughs> problem where I shaved my head because it was so hot last Whoa. week. And uh, now it's quite chilly tonight. And uh, But for the days I've been hiking and climbing, I've been quite glad. I'm telling you, this right here is going to be doozy. I'm telling you right now. You know what? I bet that, I bet that storm coming has got tigers in it. Mine. As you just heard, the emergency alert just went out. We have a tornado warning that has been issued here in the province of Alberta. We are going to go live. I was just eating a whole pile of popcorn before this, so hopefully, hopefully I don't choke on popcorn here. All right, here comes the storm. Winds are cranking up at the surface. The dust is getting ready to get blown right at me here. So uh, things are really starting to intensify out here as the supercell continues to move into the Brooks area. Strong winds, hail could be a threat with this thing as well as this thing goes outflow dominant. Very impressive storm, moving in right now. Wow. Brandon Houck, you've been watching severe thunderstorms in Brooks, Alberta. Tell us about your week, tell us about Saturday. Tell us about today. Okay, so uh, well, last week we had all that heat that we sent to the East, east Coast. So it's our fault. And we also sent that cold front too. So it's also our fault. Uh, so I do apologize for that. Uh, anyways, uh, so last Saturday, we had that cold front come through and we had a potential for severe storms to initiate in southern portions of Alberta. And I looked at the soundings early Saturday morning, as usually what I do when I get up, I look at those soundings and look at the bottles and everything, see how everything goes together. And we had a potential for uh, left mover supercells to come off the foothills uh, late Saturday afternoon. And it, well, it certainly did happen. We had a line of thunderstorms develop in the foothills and a isolated supercell developed just south of Calgary uh, right around lunchtime Saturday afternoon. And then as we went into one to two o'clock, that indicated a area of rotation that formed south of Calgary, cross Highway 2, which is a fairly busy highway here in Alberta and just outside of High River it produced a tornado that touched down just outside of Blackie so far not has has been confirmed yet uh, so but it did do I don't think it did much damage but it was a nice little land spot all the storm chasers are on it lots of great pictures from that uh, day and then the storm started to make its move to the east and what's due east of Blackie it's my house apparently so the storm moved its way towards the east and it was moving at 60 kilometers an hour. So it was yes. fast and it was furious. And when you get a storm like that, picking up speed, that means the winds are going to really start to crank up. And they sure oh, yeah. did, especially as the storm oh, continued to approach. So it took about an hour for the storm to get here. And all of a sudden you start seeing that front move in and you start seeing the shelf cloud beautiful shelf cloud but a little still a bit of a wall cloud but i don't think it kind of lost this tornado uh genesis there as they approach our areas it went outflow dominant however the um the big story then became the winds and i was out watching this thing roll right in and i got some great footage great videos etc and uh the storm itself you can start to see the dust coming up from the surface and that indicates uh oh something's good something big is going to happen here so we had the dust pick up and i noticed that dust get picked up and i decided to book it back inside because i knew oh boy i had the same situation happen in 2019 where i didn't see the dust get picked up and all of a sudden the wind started to pick up 
Uh, this was uh, 2019 when I had uh, lawn furniture get lofted in the air. And uh, uh, what is it? A dinghy went in the air and it went flying <laughs> like hundreds of meters that way. And I'm running back and I'm like, holy crap, that is crazy. Uh, so I didn't want that You're to happen again. By a I didn't know that was going to. So, yeah, I'll have to find that video. That's a really good video. And I may have said some bad words in that video too. So, but it, I got beeped out. So that's okay. Uh, anyways, that was in 2019. But this storm itself, it made its uh, same direct hit with very strong winds. And I saw that dust cloud get picked up. And it, all of a sudden, you get a big dust storm form in here. And you couldn't see anything. The visibility was next to nothing when the wind picked up and it hit like a freight train, just like that. And wow, it was crazy. And then after the wind struck, then the hail came down. So it was about, uh, I'd say, uh, toonie size hail. Yeah, that was the size of the hail in that video there. So we had toonie size hail go through then. And then after the storm passed, it went, as it said, it was moving at 60 clicks. So it, it moved in and out pretty quickly, but it hit pretty hard. Uh, I didn't, I didn't get any damage at my place here. Just uh, a couple of branches down, but uh, down the road here, we had uh, this one house had basically it was basically like a war zone, trees and everything down. And the one guy, uh, another person down the road here, he lost his whole shed, his garage gone, <laughs> and another guy uh, just up the road over here lost his whole shop. And it was a oh, big shop, it was a metal shop and everything like that. So he lost everything. It was like flattened. So that was, and then the golf course lost a lot of trees and a lot of trees came down in Brooks as well. So, and then irrigation pivots, those things are really big and they're heavy. Like you have to take a big, couple big tractors to move one of those. And the wind was strong enough to tip it, tip one of those, a couple of those right over so that's pretty intense as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if we had wind gusts of 120, maybe 130K out here back on Saturday. So that was that storm. And then we cooled down finally after that. And then into uh, this week here, we've had uh, multiple rounds of thunderstorms, fairly weak thunderstorms. You mark my word, you write it down, you take it to the bank. Okay. I'll bet, there, I'll bet you there's tigers in it. You see all that right there? Going green, baby. Uh, I had about two other thunderstorms that went through the area today. A little bit of thunder, a little bit of lightning, but uh, it cooled down significantly. And now we're uh, oh, having some severe one. weather uh, continuing in Saskatchewan right now. We've got, uh, as of uh, 816, June 10th, we've got a line of thunderstorms moving into uh, just south of Moose Jaw through Regina. Moose Jaw's already picked up about 33 millimeters of rain, and these storms producing ping pong ball sized hail. We've had about three tornado touchdowns this evening so far in North Dakota alone. And we got another line of thunderstorms moving through Estevan up towards Wapella areas. That's ping pong ball sized hail with those storms as well. So we're keeping an eye on those storms in Saskatchewan tonight and those will sweep across Manitoba tomorrow and it looks like by next week we'll see the heat start to crank back up again and uh, with all the moisture we've had that's going to allow for humidity values and it looks like probably by Monday Tuesday we could be back to the mid 30s here in southern Alberta so hopefully I'll share some of that heat with all of you afterwards too. It's going great. Like that movie on Twister? Uh -huh. When it goes green like that, what's that fella along here name? That, that uh, talking that one guy? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he squatted down there and he's playing in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Had that dirt in his hand. Mm -hmm. Walks up and says, going green. That's a bad sign. I know what I'm talking about because I watched the movie. Okay. Uh, what, uh, what does next week look like for uh, people in Manitoba, do you think? Seeing as we have Winnipeg yeah, listeners... Let's uh, try to address them. Frankie, do you know, what do you think for next week for Winnipeg? Right, Winnipeg's going to turn really, really hot. So around the same time as Churchill, Manitoba, it's going to turn really hot in Churchill as well. How do we have to part to do today? <clears throat> what do you see for thunderstorm days uh, next week, Brandon? Uh, at least uh, after uh, today or after tomorrow, after tomorrow's thunderstorms, then things kind of settle down just a little bit for a few days, but then we start to ramp things up again. I think Monday and Tuesday here in Alberta looks like some pretty good chances, and I think Manitoba might be just a little quieter next week for stormy weather until the end of next week at least.
Brace yourself, people. This may have tigers in it. Thank you. Thank you, Ben and Hoke. Stay with us and keep us informed on what's going on tonight. Uh, you say there's new tornado warnings in uh, uh, Montana right now. So, yeah, uh, one just south of Coronac, Saskatchewan, so we'll keep an eye on that. If if it goes off, you'll hear this thing blare off. Tornado exciting. sirens. Brace yourself, people. This may have tigers in it. <laughs> exciting. I think while we're uh, in Western Canada, I think we need to talk to Joe Stover because this morning – he got to see the miracle event of the eclipse. This might have tigers in it. I gotta go, Julia. We got cows. Yeah, Joe it Stover. was. Uh, it was pretty. Uh, it was pretty cool. Let me tell you. Um, it uh, Churchill actually was was on the extreme uh, western, I guess, uh, for lack of a better word, like the border of where you could see uh, where you could see uh, this eclipse as. Almost as good as you can see it. Not quite as good as uh, folks, you know, through James Bay and up into a Cal. They those folks got to see like the actual ring of fire because it's a it was an annular eclipse, right? So not uh, not quite total. Just absolutely incredible. I was actually on call last night, so it actually worked out that I was going to kind of be up anyway. So uh, the sun rose here in Churchill about four ten a.m. and at four twelve a.m was when the moon started to uh photobomb the sun i guess and it was uh it, it was incredible i i i was able yesterday to pick up some uh like a, a welder's mask because you obviously need protection um to, for your eyes like i saw somebody this morning that was trying to like they were out with their kid and they were like look, trying to look at it through their sunglasses it's like come on no, 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 like, no. Could you take three pairs of sunglasses and like duct tape them together? Uh, no, they look like movie theater glasses, right, Joe? Like yeah, like theater. it's like, it yeah. was... 3D glasses. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> was... movie theater one, like movie theater. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was. Uh, it, it definitely you, you need like heavy duty, heavy duty protection for your eyes, especially if you're going to be. Oh yeah, no. Like uh, if you're if you're going to be looking at it, and I mean, it was a two hour event. It actually, I caught just the first little bit of it, and there was just a thin band of cloud, which as soon as the sun came up, it started to dissipate. So it was about 20 minutes for that cloud to dissipate, and when it was gone, it was a, it was a clear view, and it was about 89% um, of the sun was covered by the moon, and it was just, number one, to, to see that uh, through, the, uh, through the welder's goggles, to actually see the sun have the moon in front of it. I haven't seen that with my own eyes uh, for about, oh, 1989 was the last time that we had something like that here. And <laughs> so, so I remember every, that one. So this yeah. is every, uh, let's see, it's every like 32 or is it 42? Uh, well, it's not, it, it's not uh, absolute, right? Because, I mean, everything with the way that uh, the world um, or that the earth rotates uh, in relation to the sun and then the moon, everything, like, you know, like it, it's, it's not like a Halley's Comet type thing where yeah. you know, every 70 years it's coming. So it's a all depends on a number of factors. And thankfully, the scientists have it all figured out. So, I mean, we, we have eclipse schedules for the next, like, thousand years or something like that. But the coolest thing, yeah. uh, the coolest thing was that I noticed was the shadows that everything, uh, that everything projected with, with a sun that was 90% covered by the moon. Now... The shadows were not sharp. They were a lot of them were dithered. I kind of took a, I took a video of it because I needed to see. I, I needed to like you know have it in my in my memory again, and it was just so bizarre. Like because there's, uh, I think two shadows, two or three shadows. I'm not exactly sure, but there's two or three shadows that the moon will cast with the sun behind it. So all these shadows kind of like fight with each other on the uh, on the ground and just with the <laughs> with the crazy sky lighting like the lighting was so crazy it was just trippy it was the trippiest thing ever it was five in the morning i was tired yeah and, and with that combined with everything that was going on it was just it was otherworldly it was like being high without even touching anything it was amazing hey, yeah i mean like joe yeah joe man uh for you to look at those you need like those uh glasses that Willy Wonka was using in like the uh Charlie and Chocolate Factory. You need like those you need like those ones that he has. But like um 
must have like been crazy because I have never seen one before and everything like that. And well, I'm well, just like, it must have been. It, was it, it like it, well, nighttime? Was it nighttime for you? Was it? No, 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 no. Um, so the only time that you'll ever see the sky actually no, no, like did it like darkened. look like night like look like night when it was happening or was no, it like... no 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 it was no. still it, it's still day like it there was still obviously okay. the lighting was uh was was different because still like oh. that's 90 percent of the light is gone but the sky was still blue um everything was still shining and the sun if you didn't know any better this my head tigers in it you would you would think that it was the full sun like that's how bright the sun really is Oh, um, so yeah. the only time that you'll ever see the sky actually physically darken to almost night-like conditions is when it is a total solar eclipse, and which I've never seen yet. Joey, did you have you seen any? Well, when it happened in 1989, they made all us kids uh, stay in class with the curtains closed because people might look at it. Then there was another partial one uh, that would have been in 1994 or five. I can't quite remember, but I remember I was in grade 10, so 95 maybe. And um, there was this weird kid uh, who looked like Beavis from Beavis and Butthead. And the next day, he had like this big, uh, like, bunch of bandages around his head. Uh -huh. And I guess, I guess he looked at the sun, stared at the sun, you know. And so, Frankie, you want, gonna kill you. what can happen, Frankie, if you if you try to watch an eclipse without a, a welder's goggles? That can cause total blindness. Yeah, I mean, like if you like you look at that thing, I could just like imagine, like, like okay, yeah, like brighter than like the light of like the dentist use and everything, like like when you have to look up, but like this, like this ain't no dentist office here. You got this that is, like, right. Go on, uh, like. Big light. So, well, and if really, you look at this and you die. It's yeah, like well, a movie. Like, well, really, like, if you look at you die. I don't know. I don't. You're, know. you're when, when you when you look at a sun that's even <laughs> even not yeah, quite it hurts. It, it it hurts, and even total solar eclipses. <laughs> um, you know, like there will be people that look up. I believe that the uh, America's last commander in chief. That's what I was just about to sun. say. <laughs> um, and. <laughs> The thing is with that, it's you can look at it. This my head tigers in it, but you don't know exactly when that moon is going to move, because when that first glimpse of light comes at you, like that is concentrated sunlight directly into your into your eyes, and that straight in the eye that'll, that'll, that'll that right that's right in your freaking eye. Do you Let me ask you. Your eye. Here's a <laughs> hypothetical for you guys. If this is a just before you do. Um, we haven't introduced you yet. Trey Campbell is back with us from, uh, he works in radio in Texas and, uh, GB, the rap and weatherman, Gabriel Berardo in Toronto. So we haven't got to you guys, but please ask your question. So this, this is a hypothetical. Say former commander in chief looks up at the sun, the moon moves and boom, he's blind. What happens then? Do you think because he got blinded by the, by the eclipse, he would lose, like, he would have to resign. I'm definitely guessing Jesus was not in the light. Yeah. He was not, uh, he, he was not Manfred, Manfred Manned, I'm afraid. Yeah, he wasn't blinded by the light, or he wasn't <laughs> the weakened. Or Bruce Springsteen, I suppose I should say, because Bruce Springsteen actually wrote that yeah, song. Yeah, that's true. Little known fact, Bruce Little Springsteen. Fact. Yeah, wrote. So naturally, Bruce Springsteen's the only person on earth who understands all the words to that song. This my head tigers, ain't it? Little known fact, it's also the worst Manfred Mann song. You're not the only one that yeah. has ever said that, Joey. I've heard that plenty <laughs> of times. Didn't they make a lot of funk and they and they kind of made like music like that to try to get on the radio, Manfred Man? The album Solar Fire is just psychedelic. Oh, uh, yeah, so GB, like the rapid weather man, I, I want to get to you. Too. No, wait, hold up. I have, okay. I have a question for Joe. Um, does the temperature change in a solar eclipse? It it does for a, a, a total solar eclipse. Uh there is a, a so how? there uh it goes down by a few degrees like nothing oh wow like it's enough that you can feel it but it uh, but not for not for something like this um but with with total solar eclipse where the where it's entirely covered by the by the moon there is a drop in temperature for 
for the duration of the eclipse in the certain spot, which is only oh wow, like I don't know, five minutes or ten minutes or something. Like I said, I've never seen a total solar eclipse myself. It's yeah, my dream, yeah. my dream to do that someday. But I have read that uh, that yeah, that there is a, a a drop in the temperature. Do you like the frogs start croaking? You know what? That it'd be interesting to see. Like, and actually, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that. Last night was when the frogs woke up, and like, oh. wait, like Chir Churchill is is basically like the tundra is a swamp, right? Like a spongy swamp is what the tundra is. And we got frogs up there. We got frogs up there, and when they start going, oh my goodness! It's just like <laughs> times like a million. It's, well, it's that's pretty what the lakes like here, but it, oh, yeah? it's still not quite like Ontario growing up in the swamps. Uh, in central Ontario, where there'd be bullfrogs, yeah. spring peepers, beep, 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 yeah. and, just, <laughs> and leopard frogs, burr, 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 and just the whole swamp going <laughs> off, man. Do you guys have cicadas up there? Like cicadas? You know, those uh, those things that go yeah. off. Not, yeah. not, not in Manitoba, but I'll, I'll defer to my Ontario friends, because I think they're kind of more, at least closer to Ontario than it would be Manitoba. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, like, I don't, like, know about any uh animals in my area <laughs> this is my head tigers ain't it i gotta go julia we got cows <laughs> another cow actually i think that was the same one if you're asking me that question i don't know about much animals i'm not like i don't like study these frogs and it's not like, <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah you I think do, uh, pay attention sorry. to weather though gabriel <laughs> yeah so sure uh, does. Mm -hmm. talk to us about we will uh, stay with us, Joe. That's yeah. such a great report. That was awesome. Um, Joe. <laughs> and we're going to talk about Frankie's 10th anniversary of his YouTube channel tonight still. So I want to get through everybody quickly. Uh, okay. But it's really important that we talk to GB, the rapping weatherman. How you doing, bro? Oh, yeah. It's very important. You can't forget it. I'm like, I'm like the freshest man out here. Like, how could you forget me? <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. But I'm just Fresh. messing with you. But anyway, yeah, yeah. So uh, we, have, we have seen a lot of heat. To Ontario, it have it have been hot, and I mean, and I mean a heat wave late, late, uh, late last week, and and to, and until like the weekend, man, it was it was at least like thirty three, I think, and actually one spot feeling uh closer to forty, and well, look, uh, we actually have seen some rain actually, right, so um basically uh from like we have like the lake so like the lake breezes kind of right uh right on the winds coming off the lake like that cooler air moving uh moving off the lake right um that like um that basically kind of acts like a front right so we're like it forms these storms that could dump like 50 or more millimeters of uh rainfall and everything in like a short amount of time so it's um I mean, it's very uh crazy with that right like we have also seen the heat but like um thing is that well like with these storms and everything like that uh they are very isolated so it was very spotty so i like i um i actually know this for a fact that some of us are still in a drought some of us are uh some of us have of course seen like a lot of like rain like 70 millimeters probably in at least like one or two spots so open like a drought over here and then it and then it's been dry over there but but guys i have i have a weather wrap about this heat thankfully it's <laughs> over now but i mean it's not really over to be honest i mean like it's still at least 25 26 outside and i mean it's so hot so like whenever the weather man or like the meteorologists say wiping out all that heat and humidity yeah yeah guys they just lie to you because clearly it is still hot where i am so i don't know what the hell they're talking about but anyway um i have i have a weather wrap for you guys right now and it will be a nice <laughs> fun one this time because i got the sunglasses and i got the backwards hat <laughs> I gotta, I gotta say, I gotta say, GB. I know I say this every time, but yeah. god damn, you look good, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, man. I wanna like, I wanna look like the best because whenever, whenever I look good, I feel good about myself. Well, so that's all. The I radio say. listeners have to understand. He's wearing a black suit, 
uh, with a, a purple tie, and he's got white sunglasses black on. Shade, black black hat. Hat. He's Pink just tie. looking fresh. Oh, and you're gonna. Purple. What happens? In, oh, what happens in eighteen days, Gabriel? Eighteen days. Uh, my God, eighteen days. Uh, am I like supposed to know this question, or am I just like losing my mind? I might be wrong <laughs> about the date, but is that when you graduate? Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, man. Right, like it is. Yeah, it is. Uh. It's on the 29th of, of course, this month uh, at about 7 p.m. And it will be great because I get to finally leave the four years of uh, being asked to do worksheets and everything like that. But anyways, so how, how are you going to dress for that? That will be really fun, I think. That will be really fun. I get to finally graduate and move on from... Some of my great friends, and well, some of the most boring teachers, which will be great. But <laughs> anyway, guys, weather wrap. I'm gonna go and get on this little beat here. Oh, yeah, man. It's been hot in Ontario, but oh, it's been hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, uh, all over my block, man, it's way too hot to walk, man. So I gotta go take my socks right off now. Look at them, even when I walk outside, wait, hold the way, man. It's been way too hot to walk outside. Looking at no rain, man. Wait, hold the man. I wanna see some drip drop, but you know what? I can't be so I gotta get on my flip flop because you know that, man. There's been no rain drop falling from the sky in a drought. So you know what it's about because you know I get the suit and I take some photos outside with a woman looking at me, looking fresher because you know that I'm no weather. The man, we under the high pressure And yes, I do not take no lecture Cause I've been looking fresher And yes, you know the man I got the flow just like I'm Usher And so they know that yes, it's been so hot and humid Man, I go outside and yes, look I do not even feel like a human Hold the weight, man But it's been so hot when I walk on the ground Like the hot rocks But y'all already know that in my mouth With a god, the ring and a pop like hot rocks Wait, hold the weight, man Wherever I walk, some areas got rain, but some areas won't change because it is so dry. So when I look up at the sky, look at all the clouds, and so I gotta say goodbye because the heat is really racing, just like I am racing because the heat is really pacing. And look at the sun that I be facing because I don't even know this, but you know what? I chose this. I'm gonna walk across the lake just like a Moses. Oh, no, wait, the lake has evaporated. So what do I do right now, man? I don't know what to do. Oh, wait, hold the wait, man. It's been so hot outside. I just want to go on water slide. But they can't just shoot in a lot of lines. Wait, hold up, man, because Doug Ford want to close everything. Now, what am I supposed to do? But then it's just track and sing. It's been so hot. It's been so rich. Because just on outside, I see the days. And I see the flowers and I see the sun. Now I got the power, so let's have some fun. I go to the park on the way, it was closed. So now, where the hell am I supposed to even go? Oh, wait, to the water park on the way that's close to. So now I'm wondering what the hell am I even supposed to do? Now I'm trapped inside of my house. Sitting watching Netflix, sitting right on my couch. Man, I gotta find a job. I got no money in my pouch. Sitting like a slouch. What am I supposed to do right now? <laughs> Hold up, wait. I don't have my license, so where am I supposed to go? On the way, I'm getting that this summer. On the way, what a bummer. On the way, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna drive anyway in the summer, chasing storms. Yeah. <laughs> How was that? <laughs> Nice work. Oh, actually, pretty wow. good for me. Yeah, I know. Wow. I like that one. That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. I Thank wish you. I had a copy of this. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. Uh, that was that was all off my uh, mind, by the way. I did not write any of that. <laughs> Incredible. Well, you might not get a copy, but you can also find it on my YouTube channel, Joey yeah. Only Care. Dude. You can hear it on Saturday mornings at uh, C for 88.7 FM in Prince Thanks. George. You can hear us in Winnipeg on Mondays, CKUW 95.9 FM. And, of course, Vancouver, CFR 100.5 FM. Thank you. Thank you so much. I got to do that three times an hour. The radio call signs. That's the way it is. The last but not least, we want to talk to Trey Campbell. It's been raining down in Texas. Just It's been flooding down in Texas. All the telephone wires are gone. Trey Campbell, you there still? 
Yeah, I'm here. I I um I was it was raining pre- it was like just so much rain last week. We didn't get any flooding here, but um it's back to Texas weather now. Today I think the heat index was 103 Celsius. So Oh my god. Yeah, it was it was <laughs> pretty miserable. Celsius. What, what were we saying, Frankie? 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Not Fahrenheit. Celsius. Yeah, you're right. 100 yeah, be, degrees uh, Celsius. <laughs> you'd be yeah, boiling. Yeah. yeah, thank you for clearing that up for me, Frankie. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I appreciate that. For uh, 100 degrees Fahrenheit was the, the heat index. Um, and the humidity, I think, was at 83%. Um, it was just, out, it, it, but it was good weather, no rain, a lot of cloud cover. I mowed the yard today and um, it was, it was good. It was, it was what we're accustomed to down here in Texas. So um, yeah, it's just, and it's back. Prairie crops, it's for winter storms. Yep. You might even come to Nova Scotia this winter for, for a big blizzard. You'll be doing rafting weather, man, in Nova Scotia in a blizzard. <laughs> I don't, I don't, like, he went to, like, he went to, like, Joe, and then he went to me in, like, the same exact sentence. I was like, whoa, wait, what's that's going on? Great, great idea, Frankie! <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah. you, you, you just gotta keep up, man, that's all, you yeah. just gotta keep up. Frankie, um, yeah. Frankie's kind of like Joey's travel agent sometimes. He's like, you're <laughs> going to Nova Scotia. And what about Gabriel? You'll be coming to Nova, Nova Scotia, Scotia for hurricanes next. I like I actually might be going there this summer. Like actually like I might be taking a trip there this summer. And then like I just got like Frankie texting me, oh, oh yeah, like you will be seeing me in Nova Scotia. I was like, wait, what? Does he like actually know I'm I actually might go to Nova Scotia? Or am I like what the hell, man? This You're guy knows the future. You know. Nova Scotia for big fall storms. In the yeah, yeah, man. You know, I don't know. I like, I don't know. Know everything. Like he's the, when I was he's, getting like he's my the Oracle. Yeah, he's wow. celebrating ten years on YouTube on Monday when this show is airing. Ten years, Frankie. Tell us about that's great being on YouTube for ten. I was seven years old, guys. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A whole decade. That's congratulations. Frankie. That's like more than half my life, and that's like uh, that's like a quarter, like less than like you guys lives on there because I'm like so young and then it got 30, 40, 50, 60, boom, a big age gap. But anyway, wow. I'm like, wow. Well, I, got, <laughs> I got some, some classic Frankie videos here. I want to share with you all. This is my head toggers, ain't it? Hey everybody. Hey everybody. 11 years ago today, my original severe earthquake warning for California in September, 2010 on my old YouTube channel, Flank 99 went viral. I got so many views in the videos. Today, 11 years ago, I'm Frankie McDowell. This is my head tigers, ain't it? This is Frankie McDowell, my own TV station live in the Neville Park. Attention, citizens of California. Attention, citizens of Oregon. Attention, citizens of Washington. And attention, citizens of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Earthquake warning has been issued for California. It's going to be 9.0 or greater magnitude. People in California, you have to be prepared for a major earthquake. It's going to occur in September 2010. The earthquake will be so powerful in California. It may destroy lots of houses. <coughs> it may destroy telephone poles. It may destroy all kinds of transformers. It may knock all kinds of telephone poles over in California. People in California, be prepared. Have your medical kits ready. Have your everything ready. And have all the flashlights ready and candles and everything. Your earthquake will be so powerful in California. It may destroy everything. It's going to be 9.0 greater magnitude. Golden Gate Bridge. May collapse. It may affect Arizona, Nevada, Utah, Colorado. It may affect Montana, Idaho, and everything. People in California, be prepared. 
for September 2010 major earthquake. Have a nice day. People in California, be prepared for a major earthquake. Good luck. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. What a, what a little kid that guy was. This is my head tigers, ain't it? Attention, viewers of Tosh.0. Oh. <laughs> Hilarious video warning has been issued. Attention, citizens of California, earthquake warning has been issued for California. It may destroy blocks of mass. It may destroy telephone poles. It may destroy all kinds of transformers. That's Frankie McDonald. He's from Canada. I should explain it. <laughs> He's got 178 videos, but this is the most popular, probably because it's spot on accurate. He's done the research. He predicted the oil spill, Super Bowl 14, Super Bowl 37, and Al Gore banging Larry David's wife. <laughs> yeah, who's laughing now? Animals can predict tsunamis, the mentally disabled can predict earthquakes. That's documented. <laughs> you should take him seriously. Sean Penn is. I heard he wants to play him in a new movie. This is my head tigers, ain't it? Frankie McDonald. World, the Legend. world famous, the world famous Legend. Frankie McDonald. Legend. That's amazing. God, actually, God. For Tosh Point in June 2010. How was that? Great. How did the? How, what? It, what Great. was the earthquake like, Frankie? Did, did was the earthquake bad? And that means I just did a video, and then a major earthquake happened in March 11, 2011, location Japan. Yeah, that was one of the worst earthquakes of all time, right, Frankie? Like, that one destroyed Japan, remember? Debris went across the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, but did, how did California fare? Did California get an earthquake? Or? They had some of the earthquakes and tremors. Yeah, that makes sense. That was that was really good, Frankie. I didn't yeah. like how Tosh was, was kind of, like, picking on you a little bit, but it was still, that was really cool. I think that's just how Daniel Tosh does... No, things, I know, you know, but look, um, like it's all like it's all like part of like the uh show. I think like he wasn't meaning to pick on him. It's just comedy and it's yeah. rawest kind of form right there, as you yeah, will see. Comedy. But um, we love uh, we love Frankie, mm-hmm. and we also we also love that guy also too. Nobody was picking on each other. I think I that don't think it was just, necessary, but. But it's yeah, cool we, you you got featured on Tosh. Yeah. So yeah, Frankie, tell yeah, us well, about tell us about your ten years of YouTubing. The highlights. You now have two hundred sixty five thousand subscribers. I opened up my YouTube channel on June 14, two thousand eleven. Dogs and Wolves, aka Frankie McDonald. The famous Dogs and Wolves. Yeah. So Frankie, I got a question for you. Out of your ten years of uh, of being on YouTube. What is your most popular video? Guy, try to see 50 hot dogs at once. How many views did that get? 1.7 million views. <laughs> incredible, buddy. That's incredible. Wow. What's your second most popular video? Guy, the guy dancing Dan being chased by Gorilla uploaded on July 8, 2016. My favorite is the one uh, where the, the guy laughing really hard. That's that my one. favorite. Yeah. D- Frankie, yeah. Did, you, did you watch something that made you laugh, or were you just kind of laughing off the cuff? I just had I my... Like Orange Man. Yeah, Orange Man's great. But but yeah. were you were you thinking of something funny? Was there a joke somebody told you, or did, were you just laughing? Like guy dancing and things like that. The guy dancing and being chased by tigers that Snoop Dogg shared my video in 2016. This is my head tigers, ain't it? Yeah. Snoop Dogg, <laughs> hey. Yeah, that was. I, make, I remember that one. That was a classic. I've been trying to get Frankie to laugh because his laughing video is so funny. Ever since I first started talking to him, and uh, I've had no success. It's hard to make a comedian like somebody who's so hilarious laugh, like because they're so used to making everybody else laugh. I'd imagine. <laughs> oh, I like that's. I mean, like, yeah, that's some philosophical gets- stuff there, Trey. I like that. Yeah, the the. That's I, I don't know. I, I just feel like um Frankie's so he's he knows he knows the hits and uh he knows what make what really makes people smile and 
and it, and it works out, you know, cause I agree. You're, yeah. ab- you're absolutely yeah. right. Well, and here's to, here's to 20 or here's to 10 more years, at least Frankie, like that's uh, you rule the internet. You're my favorite person on the internet and I hope you're on there forever and yeah. ever and ever. Favorite. So where's uh where are you going in the next ten years? Where's where's the Frankie McDonald YouTube channel gonna go? What's what's in store? I we get more subscribers. And Frankie do? World Tour. Going to every oh, single yeah. country, every single continent in the world, every single country in North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Oceania, even Antarctica and South Pacific. What's Possibly gonna... in outer space. <laughs> What's going to happen at your shows? This is my head toggers, ain't it? So many people go see me. What do you, 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 said, you, you said you were going to you said you were going to give me a job, right? You're going to let me uh like uh hang on hang on to your coattails and uh, I can be your hype guy or something, right? You got to yeah, have I'll a job for third world countries and things like that to perform. Yeah, like wow. I want to wow. sing at that show. Then if Jeff Bezos going up the outer space <laughs> next month. Yeah, he's Yeah, yeah Frankie. Uh, are you going out there back? Like, they should just yeah. space hotels gonna be completed in 2027. Yeah, the, they might. He might just kind of stay in space, like and start, like uh, you know. Sorry, you don't just, have permission to land, buddy. Yeah, like um, you're in a restricted you can, airspace. You can float yeah. up there at the rest of the junk. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> you he's, he's, um, is he gonna take one of his cars with him? Oh no, that that's Elon Musk, isn't it? Wasn't Elon Musk oh. the guy that had the? Oh, uh, I get those dudes confused. Elon yeah, Musk, and Jeff yeah, Bezos. yeah, the cars, yeah. And then the CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, and his brother were going up to space in July. Didn't he start at McDonald's? Like he started working at McDonald's for it. Like you know the whole. Uh, yeah, they give the somewhere. whole spiel. <laughs> like you're like he started his his life. Uh, everything started for Jeff Bezos at McDonald's. Like. To try and paint such a positive picture of that's his problem. Yeah. Jeff hey, Bezos. Yeah, he looks uh, like Mega Mind. <laughs> no, the McDonald's looks like my great ten religion teacher in a way. I don't know. <laughs> McDonald Brothers, Richard James, February 2, 1909 until July 14, 1998. And Marie James, November 6, 26, 1902. The, on day of death, December 11th, 1971, we're American entrepreneurs who founded the fast food company McDonald's. Uh, there you go. Oh. Fun fact with Frankie. Um, <laughs> I, I always love when Frankie kind of gives us a bio for like um, for like people. It, like you never know when it's going to come, but when it when he gives well, you a bio, the most, yeah, it's wow, the, yeah. the most random facts, and he's he's got them all. And I think. I think that would actually make a great book. Frankie's Facts. I think that would be his second bestseller. Yeah. Right nice. behind well, I mean, be prepared. Going right yeah, here on the meteorological that. report. When I am Yeah. Yeah. When I uh what I am shocked about is that well, I have been watching Frankie for like years or like I've seen like videos of him and like, me like not even knowing if I would ever even and now like and now like he goes like live with me sometimes. He's on the Whatever it's called, comedological report. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's a mouthful. He's it's on. Mouthful. I'm like the seeing best part like is everyone him trying to like say it now, kind of like him as a person. Like it's so <laughs> like uh, crazy. Like it's shocking. Like to be on a video call with him and like a Zoom call with him and everything. And I would be like, would I even ever do that in my life? Thinking of that and now. Like, right, like I am, I am, I am. Like, I'm, he was a legend. Yeah, I was an amazing legend. I was really surprised with how accessible Frankie is, but yeah, know, I know I was too. Yeah, like I he, was... he, um, I just kind of like I was just so surprised because I just asked him one time on Twitter, and it was like that. He was, I don't know, maybe, maybe me and Frankie in the universe were supposed, to, we were all supposed to be here. Yeah, yeah, I know. I right? think that like, makes that makes that totally makes sense, Trey. Because you know that's it, you pretty much just mirror my story, my Frankie story is. Uh, you know, I followed him for years, was a big fan of his for years, and uh, and I uh, responded to a tweet once. He tweeted something out, and I responded to it, and Frankie got a hold of me right away. And then I think like two days later, he's like, "Hey, what's your number? I'll call you." 
And yeah. we've been uh, we've well, been buds ever I, since, man. It's been great. It's been as well. Uh, I like how it all, of course, started with me is that well, uh, I got this text from Joey only when I was when I was had one day. Oh yeah, look, um, would you like to join our Zoom call, comedological report? And I was like, oh, <laughs> well, I'm gonna go and give it a try, right? So. Like, uh, First, like the first time, I thought he meant 6 p.m. Previous uh, Eastern time. Uh, give me a notice that, well, like it was actually 6 p.m. Like what? Like your time. What? Like, like, like what? No, no, no. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so right. Uh, so then like I had to like find it out, right? And I actually didn't even know that Frankie would, of course, be on here. And I was just like, wait, became more like closer. Like I, you know, message, like we all, of course, message Frankie. Right. But I was thinking, um, I went like, I went on, uh, went the show is random, just like the weather, on, you know, live with him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It's like really crazy. Yeah. Good. Wow. Are your cross Canada life. weather checkup every week? <laughs> your uh, review of what happened in the weather with our meteorologists. Uh, Frankie, congratulations on 10 years on YouTube. You, Thanks for letting us all be part of your thing, and uh, thanks for being part of the show with us. Yep. We're excited for you, where it's going to go next. Brandon Houck, last question to you. Any updates on that uh, severe storm line through Saskatchewan? You know what? I bet that, I bet that storm coming has got tigers in it. Oh, well, we still got some uh, severe thunderstorm warnings in this, uh, right around uh, Alida up towards Fleming. Those storms moving off to Manitoba. We still got the storm in Cardiff, and we got a new tornado warning in North Dakota. This one at Eping, North Dakota. This storm has some pretty strong rotation on it moving towards the northeast, and it's producing baseball size hail. Baseball. Big hail. Baseball. Size of the earth. Oh, and we're just. We're we're just starting to see that uh, now there's some weather warnings coming in now for southwestern Manitoba. Severe thunderstorm watches and severe thunderstorm warnings and and stuff like that. So that makes sense. It's uh, it's coming. What happens if it's a hail size of the earth? And boy, <laughs> would, that, that with, would, uh, that, would that be something? Well, <laughs> rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, rest we in peace. We answered that with Mark Robinson, remember? <laughs> Frankie, it's been a good run if that's the case, but I I don't know. I mean, if, if it's hail that size, it's basically it a meteor. Me. You say that, Joey, but as soon as it hits you, it's going to hurt really bad. It's like earth, bad earth, earth, earth sized, headaches, earth sized sure. hail, I think would be, uh, I don't think it would hurt. <laughs> yeah, we would <laughs> probably get cataclysmic. It would be a cataclysmic, baby. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah up in the outer space. I think you just melt away before anything even happens. I think it would melt. Yeah. I think it would melt as it reaches the atmosphere, but I don't know. Because no, it wouldn't. Like, it would uh, smash the like, earth and explode. I don't know. But... Yeah. Well, Explosions. I mean, like. Explosions. It all, like, it all, of course. Yeah, actually, yeah. Probably, yeah. Probably, you're right. I don't think, I don't see that. Thing melting. I don't see that thing melting. You, you probably wouldn't get good <laughs> Wi Fi. It would wipe out all the dinosaurs. Makes fools of us all. It wipe out all the dinosaurs that are still left, such as uh, Jason Kenny. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Loves it. My Loves Twitter it. is Frankie McDee. My Facebook is Frankie McDonald. My Facebook public figure page is Frankie McDonald. My clapper is Frankie McDonald 1984. My Instagram is Frankie McD1984. My LinkedIn is Frankie McDonald. My Snapchat is Frankie M A C D O N. Mm. My TikTok is Frankie McDonald 1984. My Twitch is Frankie McDonald 1984. And my YouTube channel is Dogs and Wolves. And I'm Joey Only. Thanks for coming on the Commuterological Report. You're listening to us on 88.7 FM in Prince George. You're listening to us on. Uh, 90, 95.9 FM in Winnipeg and 100.5 FM in Vancouver. Thanks for coming on the show, Frankie McDonald. Congratulations. Thanks for coming on, GB, Joe Stover, Thank Brandon Houck, Monica Bullu, Trey Campbell, yeah. everyone. We'll see you all next week and uh, stay safe out there. Good day, folks. Night, everybody. Yep. Bye for okay. now. Bye now.
This might have tigers in it. Drink, drink, drink. The people in BC Forestry Reform Group were asking, you know, what sort of uh, forest we're leaving behind. I don't think you understood when I started the video that I was in a lo the logged forest. This is it right here. This has already been logged. We're standing in it. We're working way further back. There's some cedars growing in again, so in a couple years there'll be a chance to harvest them. This is the aftermath. This is what you can expect if we come in and logged your property. Got a contract and sold your wood to a mill. Whoa, I trip over a log. Price of cedar is very high right now, so lots of property owners want to cash in on that. But we don't need to mow the whole forest or get big, big machines in here, harvesters and whatnot. All we need is a skidder and two guys. This is the area we worked in last, so it's a bit of an opening in the forest. It'll fill in in the next five years quickly, you'll see. This is the logged forest. This is what sustainable logging is. This is one of the logs we've picked. As you can see, it's not very big. We're not going for the largest trees. There's some really big trees in here, but uh, some of them are just too nice to leave. You want to have a, a forest that's nice to look at and walk in and leave some wildlife trees. You got guys like this pine right here. There's only two pines in this section. So you don't touch them, let them uh, spread some seed. Same with uh, the one fir tree nearby. It's a really nice marketable log, but we leave that tree because uh, it's the only one of its kind within uh, some distance. So that's how you do it. These cedar, they just keep popping up and popping up. Everywhere you look in this forest, there's new cedar shoots and juvenile trees. So taking the cedar out of here isn't gonna impact it all it's going to do really is allow these trees uh to get some sunlight and grow up and grow straight so the straighter the log is you know this is a very nice straight log i've limbed it so that there's it's just right smooth marketable log that's how it's done in other words you can look at it this way we're taking a forest that was a complete fire hazard culling and uh, thinning it and uh picking the marketable logs out in the process and feeding their families. It's that simple. <clears throat> Catching on my shirt. Two guys and a skitter. And here's our pile we're building. Explain to the audience what you're doing, John. It's called bucking. You buck the logs into um, lengths the mill wants. The mill wants only certain lengths. on the mountaintop and check out the folds in this granite. That is something else. Goes all the way up, striking down that way. And here's the mountaintop. Let's get a little higher. Oh man, the incredible folds in the rock here. Just fantastic, way up at the summit. Look at some of these folds. That is some mountain building magic. The view is pretty good from up here. Nice series of cliffs. Maybe not quite enough for a selfie side. My feet are way wetter than I'd like them to be and the bugs are a lot worse than maybe you want. This is what really stinky shirt I got. So good thing to wear. Don't want to smell too nice up here. Bit of a thunderstorm threat over there, but it's going the wrong way. It's got a nice anvil top, but this is the direction I need to be worried about. And so far, nothing's too coherent. This is starting to look gross, though, so... The main, my main concerns are lightning, of course. Uh, that's a bad one when you're up at the top. I would tell most people not to do this, but... This might have tigers in it. I gotta go, Julia. We got cash.